What's up my friends, welcome back! This will be a very short tutorial on analog to digital converters, or better known as ADCs. Any circuit that needs to read data from the exterior world will need an ADC in order to pass analog signals to a digital representation. So let's take a closer look at this 3-bit ADC that I've built. I know that there is an Arduino here, but I'm not using the ADC of the Arduino. Instead, I'm using a flash ADC made with op amps. The Arduino will act just as an encoder. So as you can see, when I increase the analog input, I get the binary output. Now I have the 001. I increase it a bit more and I have the 010. And so on till I get all the data from the binary output. So today we will take a brief lesson on ADCs. How they work, how to measure their performance, types of ADC and also we will build our crude 3-bit ADC using op amps. So let's get started. This project is brought to you by JLC PCB, which is a manufacturer of quick PCB prototypes for more than 10 years and is the site that I use for all of my PCBs. Once designed, upload your Gerbil files on the JLC PCB site. Get a full review of the PCB, select your desired settings and order the PCB for amazing prices. I've ordered 10 of my prototype PCBs for only $2 and received those in 6 days. Crazy, right? So order your quality PCB and make your projects look a lot more professional. What's up my friends, welcome back. First of all, this tutorial will be very basic and for learning purposes. If you want an ADC, just buy one like this for a very low price. But let's get to the point. If we have a microphone, a light sensor or even a voltage drop on a potentiometer, we wouldn't be able to read that value with a microcontroller unless we have an ADC. The difference between analog and digital technologies is that in analog technology we pass the information by electric pulses of varying amplitudes. In digital technology we pass information into binary format, zeros and ones where each bit is represented of two different amplitudes. Usually in microcontrollers, those amplitudes are 0 for a logic 0 and 5 or 3.3 volts for a logic 1. So, how do we pass data if we only have two amplitudes? Well, we merge those bits together and we create bytes. We can work directly with binary variables, maybe hexadecimal, long variable, integer variable, booleans and so on each with a different amount of bits depending on the technology that is used. The most basic types of ADCs are flash, pipeline ADC and successive approximation register or SAR. Later in this tutorial we will see how to create a crude flash type ADC with some op amps. One of the most important specification of an ADC is its sampling rate, which basically means how fast it can sample data. The higher it is, the better we can reconstruct the data later. But in this video, we won't talk about AC signals that much, since we will work with very low frequencies. All I want is to read an analog value of for example the output of a light sensor. If the light is always the same, the output voltage won't change, so basically in this example the frequency is zero and we are talking about DC input. Also, the rate that the light will change is very slow. Let's now imagine that my Arduino has no ADC, only digital inputs which could detect a low or high value. How can I measure the voltage of this light sensor? Let's take a look at this very basic flash ADC schematic. We basically have an array of operational amplifiers, a bunch of voltage dividers and an encoder. I'll explain how each of these components works. First, let's take a look at the voltage divider. It's made out of two resistors. We name those resistors R1 and R2. I guess that we are all familiar with the Ohm law, which says that the voltage drop across a resistor is equal to the current that passes through that resistor multiplied by the resistance value. So let's imagine that we apply a voltage V in at the input, here on R1, and let's name the voltage in the middle of these two resistors V out. Using the Ohm law, the current that passes through R1 is the voltage drop divided by its resistance. 
So the current value will be V out minus V in divided by R1. But the same current will now pass through R2, since it's the only way to go. So now in this case the same current value is ground minus V out divided by R2. So now we have two equations for the same current value. If we rearrange these values we get that V out is the input multiplied by R2, divided by the sum of R1 and R2. And there we have our voltage divider. Let's give now some values for this example. If we apply 10 volts at the input and both resistors are 10 ohms, we get an output of 5 volts. So we have divided by half the input. Pretty basic, right? Now let's talk about the up amps. I won't get into detail since this topic is very long and complicated. I'll only explain the comparator configuration of an op amp. This is the icon of an amplifier. We have a positive input and a negative input. Then we have the output and the supply of the op amp. The gain of an amplifier in comparator configuration is basically infinite. So exactly in the moment when the positive input is higher than the negative one, we will have a high output, with a value in this case of the supply voltage. So for example, if the negative input is connected to 2 volts and the positive to ground, we have a low output. I start increasing the voltage at the positive input from 0, and exactly when I reach a bit more than 2 volts the output is now high. That's why it's called a comparator, it compares which one is higher. The last element of a flash ADC is an encoder, which in our case will be the Arduino. I will read all the inputs from the comparators and give a binary output. So now that we know all this, let's take a look at the schematic of a flash ADC, in this case of 3 bits. We see a straight line of resistors in series. But each pair of these resistors is a voltage divider. The first voltage divider is between R1 and the sum of all of the other resistors in series. The second voltage divider is between the sum of R1 and R2 and all of the others and so on. So if each of these resistors is a 1K resistor, we would have these values at the negative input of each comparator, depending on the reference voltage applied to the circuit. For example, if the reference voltage is 5 volts, we will have these values on each of the negative inputs. Now let's imagine that the analog value that we want to read is 2.5 volts. The first four comparators will have a low output, since 2.5 is lower than all of these values. But the bottom four comparators will have a high output. Now it's the job of the encoder to pass these four ones and four zeros to a 3-bit value, following this table. If the bottom comparator has a high output and the rest is low, we have the 0, 0, 0. If the second and first are high and the rest is low, we have the 0, 0, 1 and so on. As you can see, the amount of comparators will give us the resolution. With 8 comparators, we have a 3-bit ADC. With 16 comparators, we have a 4-bit converter. With 32, a 5-bit and so on. The ADC of the Arduino is a 10-bit one, so we could have 1024 values for a range of voltages between 0 and 5 volts. That gives us a step of only 4.8 millivolts, which is quite good. The ADC that we built today is a very crappy one. It only has 3 bits. I will use two LM324 op amps, each with 4 amplifiers. I'll make the series of voltage dividers with 1K resistors, as you can see here on my breadboard, from one negative input to the other. The reference voltage will be 5 volts from the Arduino supply. I'll connect each of the outputs from the comparators to digital pins D2 to D9. Next, I'll connect 3 LEDs to pins 10, 11 and 12. Those will be our 3 bits of the ADC. I upload this next simple code that will act as an encoder for 8 different values. Depending on which input from the comparator is low, we will turn on one or another LED with a total of 3 bits. The input voltage will be the output of this light sensible resistor. I know that this sensor, the more light it receives, the lower will be its output. 
Now I get my flashlight closer to the module, so the output will be 0 volts, so no LED is turned on. I start lowering the light amount and as you can see now I've got one bit. I decrease the light amount a bit more and now I have a binary 2. A bit more and now I have a binary 3 and so on with all the values. The resolution of my ADC is between 0.5 and 0.6 millivolts for a reference voltage of 5 volts. As you can imagine, for a different reference voltage the steps would be different. If we follow the table before, at 0.5 volts I should have a 000 binary output. But at 1.1 I start having the 001. At 1.6 volts the 010. At 2.2 volts the 011 and so on. If we want to sample an analog input with this crappy ADC, we should create a loop inside of the Arduino code with a different refresh rate and store the values each loop. But I better use the 10 bits ADC that the Arduino Nano already has for that. Well guys, that's it for today. Just some basic info about flash ADCs. There are already integrated chips for 8, 10 or 12 bits ADC and those are very cheap. If you would like to help my projects like this one, I have a Patreon campaign. The link is down below as always. I will really appreciate that guys. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share the video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.